rampage in the process that sends the casters and the audience into an incredible frenzy. Zyne will be there on the Phantom Assassin. Zyne wants to help by being standing a little bit further away. He's ultra killing so hard. Now he jumps back down again. Overall, the Beastmaster continue the stuns all you want, but Satanic is just great. So is the Raw, but PA, the War Stomp. Wait, really? The Creep is delaying this fight, and now Nisha goes on a rampage. It's unbelievable. The Phantom Assassin. Assassins are meant to be stealthy. He's in your face. He's the real roar of this game. BKB to dodge the storm ball. A double rampage. Nisa doing solo. Give me a triple rampage. You're gonna get it. A stun. It's only delaying the inevitable. It's a triple rampage for Nisha. Unbelievable. Game amassing a 10 kill streak whilst defending the zone for Optic Gaming. Finding kills that are insane to see. It even gets an EKIA for the next one. He's on a 10 spree. No one on Heretics has 10 kills. No one else in the lobby. Device for Astralis. July's winner is from the semi-finals of ESL1 Cologne, and it sees Device secure an AWP ace, which included shooting Alex in mid-air and naming both RPK and Apex with just one shot. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! He takes every single one from nothing to the AWP ace! Simp for E United. The winning play from August features action from CWL, and Simp knocks off three units players to put E United firmly in control and keep the pressure on for his teammates to pick up the remaining two kills and seal the round. Uh -oh. yeah! Nisha for Team Secret. 
The wildcard entry for this year's Play of the Year sees Nisha of Team Secret at the Chongqing Major go on an absolute tear-up, sealing a triple rampage in the process that sends the casters and the audience into an incredible frenzy. will be there on the Phantom Assassin. Zai wants to help by being standing a little bit further away. He's ultra killing so hard. Now he jumps back down again. Overwatch the Beastmaster. Continue the stunts all you want, but Satanic is just great. So is the Raw, but PA, the War Stomp. Wait, really? The Creep is delaying this fight, and now Nisha goes on a rampage. It's unbelievable. The Phantom Assassin. Assassins are meant to be stealthy. He's in your face. He's the real roar of this game. BKB to dodge the Storm Bolt. A double rampage. Nisha doing solo. Give me a triple rampage. You're gonna get it. A stun. It's only delaying the inevitable. It's a triple rampage for Nisha. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, after a year of planning and preparations, we are live in Arlington, Texas, here at the Esports Stadium for the 2019 Esports Awards. You have been voting and nominating millions and millions of votes, and tonight is the night that the winners will be announced. I'm Jess Brohard, and joining me is Bill Jump Carter. We're going to be bringing you all of the build-up to the 2019 ceremony before we join Shox, Golden Boy, Hungrybox, and Lottie Von Prague on hosting duties. It is fantastic to be here. Yesterday, we got a chance to actually check out some of the cool things in Arlington. We saw the Texas Ranger Stadium, got to hang out with a couple of the Rangers. Got to uh, play some baseball. A, Turns out it is a difficult sport to play. Attempted batting practice. If my family saw what I was actually doing, they would be uh, pretty happy. Then we got to try some food. Yes. We got a two foot long hot dog. Oh my god, it was a three pound hot dog, two feet long, three pounds. And honestly, I feel like I could have eaten the whole thing by myself if given the opportunity, but I had to share with other folks. There were all sorts of awesome things, but today is what's important. We're dressed to the nines and feeling fine here. I'm excited alongside the rest of the talent crew to be a part of this show and what a night we have in store for you. We are joined in Arlington, Texas by the biggest, best, and brightest in esports for a night of celebration, not forgetting we have some pretty cool shiny trophies to give away. 
And wow, I mean, I know in esports we have a lot of really impressive trophies at some of these events, but right here I am just impressed with the, you know, the prestige and the we, grandeur. Um, so we, we don't have the footage of it, um, but the, the <laughs> giant cut, cut out board, that wasn't actually the trophy. Oh, they're not actually iffy tall like that? No, it's not. We didn't actually take a fat head. But what we did do, however, is we actually captured some footage with some fancy 4K cameras. Let's take a look and see a little bit more about that trophy. So those trophies are nice. Even though they aren't eight feet tall, as Bill has pointed out for me, they are still absolutely beautiful, just like our red carpet this evening. It was a who's who of esports walking that red carpet earlier. I got to talk with several of them. A lot of, lot of really talented people in attendance here. Yeah, of course, as you can see, and you'll be seeing all night, we've got a lot of VIPs that are hanging out on the tables. They had some dinner. We got to hang out. Uh, the red carpet walking as well. Everyone who's anyone that is up for an award that's here in esports is certainly in attendance today. It's the fourth annual event, and with over 3.5 million individuals voting and getting themselves involved on social channels, it's certainly going to be one for the books. And what's really, really humbling about this event is that every single person I spoke to on that red carpet is such an important figure here in esports, and they all had such wonderful things to say about their colleagues and about the teams that got them to where they are today. And they were looking fresh as oh, well. Oh, they looked so beautiful. On the invite, it says street black tie, which for any of you that, that aren't in the fashion world, that literally means you can wear a tux, but you can also wear whatever sneakers you want. You have some of the biggest names that are used to wearing those streetwear things, individuals like Nate Shot, Hex, who always have the fresh gear, they were in dress shoes. They went full black tie on this one. All they cared about was looking fresh, and I'll tell you what, they certainly hit the case. And uh, before we do continue, of course, talking about how wonderful everyone looks, this is your reminder that the main ceremony will be taking place in around 15 minutes' time, and you do not want to miss it. It's not now, something. Now we can get back to gassing everyone up. I know, right? Now, I mean, everybody's got to have the hype up, right? Like, it's it's been, it's been fantastic. I know that you were doing some interviews on there as well. Yep. And hearing the words that they were saying about the journey that they've gone through over the course of the last year and bringing it to the summation of this moment certainly is something that we need to make sure that we highlight. It definitely is. And you know, like I said, there are so many accomplished people here in esports. And once again, just what struck me is how there are no egos here. Everyone, everyone knows that it's all about esports. It's not necessarily about the individual. It's all about let's all come together and see what we can all do to, to bring esports to everyone and, and make esports better. And not only that, but for the first time ever here for the fourth one, we're bringing, bringing it over the pond. It's not in the UK anymore. We're in Arlington, Texas. And to top it off, we're even bringing a general audience. We sold general admission tickets. Yes. There's over 350 of them in attendance. I saw them going through the security and getting themselves to their seats. And not only do you have the fans of all of us that are working in esports every day, mm -hmm. but the fans that are supporting their players, that are supporting the teams, organizations, businesses, mm -hmm. they're here in attendance to make sure to showcase mm -hmm. how much they care about the game. And after all, they make it all possible because without the viewers, what would we what would we even have here? You know, we're, we're not we're not doing this for ourselves. All right, well, not only do we have this, but it seems like we've got some awesome partners that made things possible today as well. It did. The Esports Awards 2019 would like to thank its partners. Arlington CVB. Esports Stadium Arlington. Secret Lab Chairs. The Koyo Store. Touch a ginger. 
Mackay Copenhagen. Scuff. Blink fire. Sizzle creative. Movember. Esports gear. E beats. Red Bull. Populous. Lexus. Okay, so like, actually though, if uh, I, I, I know where Scuff is sitting, you think that like if I'm nice enough, they might give me one of those controllers because they, they had the new Vantage too with some kind of decked outs and uh, I know I play on KBM, but I promise I put some use to it. They might, you know, it's flattery would never hurt, of course, for you. If you suck up to them a little bit, they might, but honestly, what I've had my eye on is one of those Lexuses. I know it wouldn't exactly fit in the goodie bag, but I mean, come on, we've got the men in black Lexus out there. We have the Black Panther one over here. I really want to just take one of those bad boys home. We had uh, some opportunity to actually check out some of the cars, and I know you guys are going to get to see it in the show a little bit later, but like, oh my gosh, you see it on your screen right now. This thing's insane. Yeah, and honestly, I was really, I, I hopped in one of those earlier because I was thinking, who's going to stop me? I mean, I'm sure me saying this right now, Lexus, you're probably not going to be too, too happy about the fact that I definitely sat in one of your cars earlier. But hey, at least I did not try to take it for a joyride. I didn't try to take it for a spin like I wanted to. I'd rather just drive that back home to Columbus instead of catching my flight. But you know, before we give Jump his next little plug and before he tries too hard to get one of those scuff controllers, we do have an interview coming up with a very special individual. Of course, Hector Hex Rodriguez. We have been uh, just singing his praises and I got to catch up with him on the red carpet earlier. Such a nice guy, so, so humble. And he's looking absolutely fantastic. He just has a really, I mean, of course, everyone is looking wonderful. It is a red carpet event, but I feel like Hex in particular, really brought the fire tonight like he does in esports. He also brought it with his outfit. So without anything further from me, Bill, how's Hex doing tonight? Hex is doing pretty good. Um, he's uh, uh, finished your food. Uh, how, was, how was the dinner? It was incredible. I ate all of it. I took some of Seth's. I took some of May's. And then I'm almost done with the dessert. All of it. Now, you showed up, obviously, a little bit earlier. You got to hang out and you know, check out Arlington and, and the things. What's your thoughts so far on the Esports Awards 2019 now here being in Texas? I'm incredibly happy. I've been to every single one except one in London, so it was always a stop, a, a stop for me on my yearly travel. So now that it's back home, I'm 45 minutes from here. Uh, it's super, super incredible. Super happy. The Esports Stadium is the best Esports Stadium in the world, so shout out to those people. You have been in the room of some of the greatest achievements in the history of esports, and now you get to participate each year uh, at something like this that kind of brings together games that you've participated in, games that everyone else has part participated in. What's it like being able to bring together so many dis uh, aspects of the industry all in one place for an evening? Well, it's all gaming. It's all gaming entertainment, whether it's esports, whether it's tra uh, traditional gaming, whether it's just you know, people playing games just for fun. So for me, being a part of the culture, being a part of the scene, uh, having been in it for so long, is just an incredible feeling to see it grow to this monumental sort of occasion. So super happy about that. Now, uh, we didn't really have the hardcore, gritty interviews on the red carpet that you see in some of the other awards shows, but now that I have you, any predictions on any of the awards tonight that you feel pretty confident in? Uh, no, 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 no. As a, uh, as a presenter, I'm not going to uh, give my opinion, but I do hope that yeah, whoever wins it deserves it. You know, there's so many talented people in the industry that it'll be fine. All right. Well, you know what? Thank you so much. I'll let you back in. I uh, have your seat to stealing people's foods. Congratulations to you for everything and Thank good you. luck for you tonight. Appreciate it. Now, of course, not only do we have the awesomeness that's surrounding everybody here, but we've also got the crowd involved, like what I had told you a little bit before. We've got general admission tickets that we sold a little bit earlier here at the esports venue in Arlington, Texas. It's certainly been one for the books. Everything's bigger in Texas, and it's always better when you can make sure to fill those big venues up, and we've been able to do just that. Not only do we have the fans in attendance, we've got the VIPs from every aspect of the industry, and as Hector kind of pointed out, a very true statement in 
in the sense that every ounce of the industry is certainly something worth pointing out to, but more importantly, worth celebrating. The celebration in excellence that you have with the eSports Awards for every year, but most importantly here in 2019, is something certainly to uh, be figuring out. As you can see, I've kind of been walking around a little bit. Uh, it's not because the Lexus is standing right next to me. It's actually because I've got my valet with the keys, and we're going to take this one out of here. And I think I've got Jess standing by a little bit to distract them while I take this Lexus. That is right, Jump. Well, thank you so much. While you're off there playing Baby Driver, please allow me the pleasure of introducing our next guest. We've got Craig Mini Lad Thompson here with me. Thank you so much for joining me. You're how, welcome. how has it been so far for you here at the event tonight? It's been amazing. I mean, being able to see everyone, you know, nice and formal, because a lot of us, you know, we're recording or streaming in our sweatpants and our shorts, and being able to see everyone come together in such an amazing way, it's, it's good to see. Your outfit is beautiful. I love the bow tie. Can you talk a little bit about, do you often dress in black tie, you know, uh, outfits, or is this kind of new for you? I mean, anytime there's like an award ceremony or something like that, I always try and dress up somewhat. Uh, it's a little weird. It's like my James Bond. I feel like if I don't have a martini by the end of the night, I'm doing myself a disservice, but it's, it's, it's good. I feel good. So let's switch gears a little bit, and I wanted to ask what your reaction was and how you were feeling when you first found out that you were nominated for an award. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I don't make videos for this kind of stuff. I make videos to have fun, you know, to make sure my audience has fun. So the fact that people can recognize me for that and, you know, come to me and say, you've been nom nominated for Content Creator of the Year, to me, it's the biggest honor I could get. And can you tell us a little bit more about your rise to prominence? Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a weird nine years. Uh, you know, it's... It started out very, very slow, just like everything else. What I tell people is, you know, growth on YouTube or streaming is very exponential. So, you know, streaming to nine viewers for three years and slowly building your way back up. And then you got big games coming out like Black Ops 2, GTA 5, which myself and my friends going at it, enjoying ourselves. And then all of a sudden people started to come in by the thousand, tens of thousands, hundred thousands, millions. And by that point, you're like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to wing it and enjoy it. How do you keep up the, the motivation when, like you said, streaming to nine viewers for three years? What kept you going through that? Um, to me, it was weird because I had a lot of people who found out about my YouTube channel whenever I was in school. So, you know, I, I'm 24 now. I started when I was 16. So for me, it was people, you know, I, I, I don't mind saying I used to get bullied at school for doing this stuff. I know a lot of people probably watching at home. If you're just beginning your channels right now, you might be going through the same thing. It's it's the harsh reality of doing something where, you know, it's a little bit outside the norm. So for the people who, um, who doubted me, you know, I know it's such a cliche thing. Yeah, the haters and whatnot, but <laughs> it really is being able to prove to people that I could do something that's bigger than myself uh, just kept me going. Because, I mean, there's been a million times where I've wanted to quit, but, you know, it all came through and I'm glad I didn't. I bet you are. Well, thank you so much for joining me here. I really appreciate the thank interview. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And you can feel free to, you know what, go get that martini that you talked about. Woo! Go enjoy your dinner, enjoy your <laughs> night, and best of luck tonight. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank Thanks. you. All right. So once again, that was Mini Lad. And just what a humble guy he is. Like I was talking about earlier, everybody here is so, so thrilled to be here and so complimentary of their peers, which is such a wonderful thing to see uh, here in, in eSports, here at the eSports Awards. And what is that, Bill? Is that you? So Jump. they wouldn't let me take the Lexus. <laughs> um, I was told that uh, there were way too many people there, and the fact that that car can go zero to 60 in probably less than four seconds, it wouldn't be, uh, it'd be a little bit of a liability. So uh, unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm back here, but- Unfortunately, oh, actually, I'm so no, sorry I, for you. No, okay, you know what, I'm just, <laughs> I can just put this down and hide. Wow, I, I it is also an honor to co-host with you just what I was talking about, those egos in eSports. Thank you, Jump. Oh, I'm going to never live that one down. But no, it has been so far a great thing. We got to hang out uh, during the dinner and, and talk to a lot of the people and really just see what they're there for. And it's something that I talked about earlier that can't be talked about enough in the sense that bringing together all sides of the industry for a celebration of something that we all love in a different way adds that value. And I know that you had some conversations with them that really allowed that to happen. Yes, out on the red carpet earlier, that was just fantastic to really get to hear from these people what it was like, um, what, that, what that moment was, that they found out that they were up for an award, and really how they were feeling. And in fact, I believe we actually have some of that footage available. Um, so uh, yeah, like I said, I was, I was speaking to these people earlier. Let's, let's go take a look at me interviewing them. <laughs> I'm Jess Brohard. I'm here on the red carpet at the 2019 Esports Awards here in Arlington, Texas. The VIPs are just about to begin, so let's have a chat with them and see how they're feeling to be here tonight. 
So how's everything going with eSports Engine? Very good, very good. S successful launch. For you, what has been the highlight of the past year in eSports? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, personally, working on Call of Duty World League, it was, it was good to send that off on a high note at Poly Pavilion and, uh, you know, see that program off and then launch, and then see the, the team launch CDL. So it was super exciting. And then looking forward to tonight, what are you most looking forward to seeing? I'm just excited to see all my friends in the industry and, and just, uh, celebrate the wins that those guys have and, um, you know, just have a good time. For you personally, what's been the highlight of the year in esports? I appreciate you asking that. Uh, the highlight of the year was on my way to the World Cup for Fortnite. The training, everything I did from building one by ones to ramping up walls, ceilings and rooftops and then trapping them to death <laughs> to almost a last place finish in the first qualifier cup. I, I thought it was a good start. Yeah. Looking forward to tonight at the eSports Awards. What are you most looking forward to seeing? I'm looking forward to running in a Nate shot. We just played some game battle competitive professional, as I like to call them. Call of Duty Modern Warfare matches the other night, and uh, one match, guy went 0-8. <laughs> I can't wait to run in him tonight. So we've been here in Arlington for a little bit. We did some of those fun VIP activations already. What has been the highlight of your trip to Arlington so far? Uh, probably getting my ass slammed by a bull uh, <laughs> into our mat. Uh, but I took one for the team. It was good content. And apart from that, free drinks are always good. So it's been a really fun time so far in Arlington. What have you accomplished this past year that you're particularly proud of? Uh, past year, um, three-peat rank one in the game I love, and uh, just expanded my career into more hosting and commentating, and I get to host this uh, awesome award show now, so a lot of good things coming my way, and I think 2020 will be a great year of hindsight and reflection and just moving on to better things. And how does it feel to be here at the Esports Awards and to be part of the broadcast team? Uh, it's something that I want to do over and over again, and I think honoring esports in this way is the best way to do it. How does it feel to be here at the Esports Awards and to be up for Videographer of the Year? It's a very, it's a very great honor to, to be here. Um, it's, why it's, it's so surreal um, because, you know, a year and a half ago, I was just asking a few people in this, uh, in this event, uh, this venue, I was just saying, you know, how, how can I get into esports? And a year later, and a year and a half later, now I'm, now I'm here. This is a, a surreal moment. What was your reaction when you first learned that you were up for the award? Um, well, I was watching with my CMO and a content manager at the time. And when, it, when the moment happened, I, I just stuck down because I knew everyone's going to come tackle me. <laughs> but it was, it was a good experience. It was, it, was, it was, again, a surreal moment. How does it feel to be here at the 2019 Esports Awards? It feels pretty awesome. I was incredibly surprised and flattered to find out that I was nominated for an award here. So I'm just kind of taking everything in. I've never been to a black tie event before. I've never worn a tuxedo before. So this is an entirely new thing for me. Well, you look really nice. What was the process like of picking out a tuxedo to come here and be up for an award? Well, thankfully I have some fantastic people supporting the team here and they helped me figure out exactly where to go, what to do, what kind of people to talk to since this is a very new frontier for me. Uh -huh. So I got the tuxedo rented, we got back, I got that in a couple days ago and then we flew out here and it's just been trying to experience a little bit of Texas while I'm out here, got some good barbecue, so it's been a good time. How does it feel to be up for an award here at the Esports Awards? It feels fantastic. I, I actually feel more pressured last year because last year I didn't expect to win and I somehow came away with the win for broadcaster of the year. Now going for back to back, which I don't think will happen, but if it does, that would be awesome. But now I'm excited to be here to see friends. Yeah, I've got friends, family involved in this thing. It's a tight knit group and it's, a, it's great to be here. All right, what a fantastic group of gentlemen we've run into. What are you all looking forward to seeing here tonight? I mean, look, honestly, everyone coming together, eSports, we've been doing this for a very long time, decades, and it's good to see this group together celebrating all the successful individuals here. I'm seeing them right now. Some of my friends, some, any time that I get to hang out with them, all at the same time, it's a good time. I'm also looking forward to seeing a drink in my hand very yeah. soon. Yeah. Wait, 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 slow my answer. I'm looking forward to the open bar. Same. I'm just happy to be with my family. This is all my family. This is a great night, so good to be here. And I know many of you are either up for an award or have already won Lifetime Achievement Awards. So what does it feel like to just be here up for an award, having won an award among so many of your peers that you respect so much? Well, look, as long as Fuiz is happy with my performance and everything that I do in life, I'm happy. 
<laughs> I'll just say, yeah, I'll say the same thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm honored. But that's it. What is it like to be here up for an award tonight? Um, definitely lovely. I'm back from last year, so it feels good. And obviously, I'm just excited to be here. What was your first reaction when you heard that you were nominated? Uh, I'm really cool with Warren, and um, he's one of the big guys in esports, in the esports awards. So when he lets me know, I'm like, let's let's go. And it's so, it feels so good, obviously. And I'm just so happy to be here. But just hearing my name up there with all these big names, it just, I mean, it's it's, it's inspiring to certain people, but it's also like inspiring to myself. Wow, what did I say? Everybody on the red carpet just looking so, so sharp and had such fantastic things to say. I mean, you want to talk about looking sharp. I mean, we, we were kind of planning our outfits as a talent crew before this of what's everybody going to wear? How's everybody going to do this? And I asked you, uh, Jess, you know, what were you going to wear? And, and you're like, well, I want to throw, you know, one strap over because I got to talk about the guns. And the guns are out tonight. They came out, baby. I don't know how they let me in. With these things, there was security at the door, but somehow someone these help. got passed. And Some, yeah, someone help me. <laughs> someone help me. It's been a fabulous night, and when you take a look at the individuals that we saw on the red carpet, you think about what something like this means, and it's talking about leading, leaving a legacy. You think about the legacy that a lot of these individuals have already created and are going to continue to do so. I got an opportunity last night to give away the Lifetime Achievement Award in esports. You had people like Sir Scoots, DJ Wheat, Sundance. You had. Some some phenomenal individuals that made themselves available for the award. They, I had a lifetime of excitement and one of the comments that every single one that walked up there said is, we did great things, we appreciate the fact that you are honoring us, but we're not done yet. And looking at the positive mentality that they have moving forward is certainly something that we're keeping our eye on. And there was just so much to take away from their sort of uh, acceptance speeches. It was very, very humbling. And it was one of those things where it's, it's, always, it's always humbling to be in a room with people, with such accomplished folks. And uh, for you, what do you think was the main takeaway or the main highlight of being in that room with such talented individuals? I mean, the fact that I was standing on a stage next to uh, DJ Wheat, who has been a huge inspiration for me over the course of my short career so far, is overwhelming. And hearing that that they are accepting an award that talks about their lifetime. Usually it's given to someone that's retired, that's not gonna be doing anything, but they are still dedicated to making sure that the future is bright in esports and that their efforts continue to make it shine even brighter. And we were talking a little bit ago about the, the physical award and sort of what having that on your shelf means. And like you said, it's, first of all, it's, it's just hard to kind of sum up an entire lifetime into just one award. But what do you think it means to them to have that award sitting on their shelf? I mean, you take a look at the conventional things, such as the Oscars, the Emmys, uh, great esteemed awards like that. And sure, it's something that's going to be on your shelf, but it's more importantly a symbol of what you have accomplished. Your interview with Maven said, Saying he's going for the back-to-back. -back. Yep. All of these things are something that people can walk away with, but more importantly, their children, their grandchildren, the rest of the community in esports can forever remember them as someone that has achieved something in a fantastic effort. We saw the video package a little bit earlier in how these players, how these organizations are making a name for themselves, and the fact that they can uh, cement themselves in history really speaks the breath of wind that they are creating for their ships. It's really wild to think just where esports might go and the legacy that it will leave. And it's just kind of a cool thought that some of these people are going to be having children who will, children and grandchildren, you know, who will see that award and think, oh, that's a really cool thing that my, my parents, my grandparents did, you know, 50 years ago. And, and just see, it's, it's just cool to think where esports will be at that time. Well, what about you? How has your experience been for this? I know that this is a new thing for us. Yeah. We, we have Shox, Golden Boy, Hungry Box, and LVP that are going to be taking a huge aspect of the live broadcast. And this is the first time that we get to show up to the esports yeah. awards and actually participate. What's yep. that experience been like for you? For me, it's been amazing. This is my first time. Uh, you know, of course, I know it's the first time that this eSports Awards have been here in Arlington, um, so I was not able to make it out to England last year, but it's been so amazing to be here. I was, you know, you saw how excited I was getting it was to great. see everyone dressed up, and it's just a really cool thing because it's it's uh, it's a truly uh, elevated experience, kind of like the, the Emmys or, or the Grammys, um, and it's it's really amazing to be here. Something that we do in our in our day-to-day -day lives and something that we prioritize in our careers is telling the stories of the players, telling the stories of what we see through the seasons, the tournaments, the broadcast, everything. Now, 
getting to be a part of that story and, and do something as prestigious as this event surely shows how great of a future we have in esports, but it's humbling in the sense that it's the people that are surrounding us are individuals that we will not only remember forever, but are constantly being these names. We've been cutting the camera back and forth and being in the same room of that is certainly something that, that raises my blood pressure and definitely makes me smile. It's truly inspiring, honestly, because it's one thing to look at your own life and see what you've done. And of course, going back to the fact that it is amazing to be here and I'm so thrilled and it's just the coolest thing to be here. I'm so excited that I get to present an award. I get to do this emceeing. I got to do those red carpet, uh, red carpet segments that we saw earlier. But you know, past that, I can look around at this room of people and see their accomplishments and think, man, that. I can only strive for those. And you want to talk about celebrity shout outs as well. We've talked to a couple, but you've seen it on your screen. Every game is here. Henry G, who's up for caster of the year, is here in a beautiful pinstripe suit. We saw Riot Dash a little bit earlier. Who are some of the ones that you've seen around today uh, that are certainly you know, making a name for themselves lately? Let's see. Well, obviously Maven. I have to give props to Maven of because, of course, as my former, you know, my colleague there at the CWL, he was such an inspiration to work with. And it was really cool to see someone from you know what I consider to be now my own little corner of esports to win that broadcaster of the award award year uh, I'm sorry broadcaster of the year award last year and then to be up for another award here today and it, and and then the best part is he's just such a down to earth guy he just strikes you as someone you would be friends with you know he doesn't have the the the, the big head that you might assume that he would now, we are less than five minutes away, ladies and gentlemen, to the Esports Awards 2019. We are broadcasting to over 30 countries around the world. And whatever chat you're in, whether it be Twitch, Mixer, Caffeine, any of the other platforms, make sure you're dropping comments, you're dropping live reactions. We want to know what you're seeing, and we need to make sure that they're taking that to social media as well. Yep, after all, it was you folks who voted, it was you folks who nominated the millions and millions of votes that you cast, we want to hear from you because obviously we wanted to hear from you on who you thought should be nominated for these awards. Now we want to hear what you think of the awards themselves and the ceremony and the amazing talent that we have here in attendance. There were 100,000 nominations that then got whittled down to 220 finalists. Over the next couple hours, we will be giving away 27 awards and highlighting the best, the brightest, but more importantly, the most deserved of something special. We're getting close. Any last thoughts from you? I just wonder how one even goes to make that, that decision because there's so much talent that how do you narrow it down to decide who makes the cut? It's so difficult. It is certainly something. We've got our timers. It's ticking down. You can see E United hanging out there. You've got Clerky, one of the general managers, of course, with Maryville University as well. You've got Ryan Morrison in the corner that evolved, actually was able to win the supporting agency of the year last year. The names are aplenty, and I know the excitement in the room is great, but there's also a lot of pressure on the board. There actually, there absolutely is. I mean, with with an award so prestigious, it's just like I, like I was saying. How do you even begin to imagine who is deserving of these awards? It's about to go down less than 60 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, from myself, Bill Jump Carter, as well as the delightful Jess Brohard. We have been your pre-show hosts, and we hope that you find yourselves in a very exciting night tonight. 30 seconds it is. We are going to be there. A quick little commercial break. And when we come back, it's going to be the Esports Awards 2019. You guys have a fantastic rest of your night. This game amassing a 10 kill streak whilst defending the zone for Optic Gaming. Finding kills that are insane to see and even gets an EKIA for the next one. He's on a 10 spree. No one on Heretics has 10 kills. No one else in the lobby. Device for Astralis. July's winner is from the semi-finals of ESL1 Cologne, and it sees Device secure an AWP ace, which included shooting Alex in mid-air and naming both RPK and Apex with just one shot. Oh, no! You've got to be kidding me! He takes every single one from nothing to the AWP ace! Simp for E-United. 
The winning play from August features action from CWL, and Simp knocks off three units players to put E United firmly in control and keep the pressure on for his teammates to pick up the remaining two kills and seal the round. Uh -oh. <laughs> Control. Misha for Team Secret. The wildcard entry for this year's Play of the Year sees Misha of Team Secret at the Chongqing Major go on an absolute tear up, sealing a triple rampage in the process that sends the casters and the audience into an incredible frenzy. Zai wants to help, 